Hey, Fred from the Laptop Barn here. Today we're going to walk you through the steps required to change the keyboard assembly on a Dell Latitude 7480 laptop. This keyboard change is a little more difficult than some previous models. Here we go. We're going to first turn it upside down, remove all of the case screws, all you're really going to need is a Phillips screwdriver to do this whole process. We also use a little pry tool, which could be a regular flathead screwdriver if you wanted to. But we're going to take off the eight screws that hold the bottom case onto the laptop as our first step. That'll pry off with your hand. You say we just pried up on it. Now, you got to take a few things off. We're going to disconnect the battery. Just pull up on the connector. And then there are two screws that hold the battery in place. Take those off. Now you got the battery out. Now we're going to take the hard drive out. There's a screw that holds the hard drive. Pull it out. Now we're going to remove a couple of uh, connectors. The Wi-Fi connector and all those connecting features as you see us doing there. There's a bracket then that holds the screen connectors. A little metal bracket pops off one screw. Add a little pry tool there just to pop it off. There you go. And once we get that off there's a connector under that which is used to connect the screen. Just pull that up. Okay. Now we've got a couple of more things to remove. There's a motherboard screws now located as you can see us going around the motherboard. There's a bracket there on top that comes off first with two screws. And that's off. Now you got another connector right in that area. Just unplug everything because we're going to basically have to pull this motherboard out because the keyboard's on the other underside of the motherboard. So we got all the connectors disconnected from the motherboard. There's one more there. And then once we do that we're going to have to take the motherboard out and there's several screws. You can see us now we're going to take one, two and continue around the circumference of the motherboard undoing the assembly screws so that we can pull the motherboard out. Once we get all the screws undone their motherboard will pick right up if we don't forget a screw. <laughs> the connector wasn't completely off there. Okay, you got to pull out the uh, smart card out of its slot there. Don't forget to do that. Then the motherboard is about to lift straight up. Just be careful. That, oops, we forgot a screw. Don't do that. Okay, totally disassembled. Now lift it up and out. Okay, that's the keyboard you're seeing right now. Upside down, the back of the keyboard. It has got a number of screws. This baby is well over-engineered. A ton of screws all the way around the circumference of the keyboard assembly. So what you have to do is completely go around and take off this plethora of keyboard screws. They're a shiny silver special screw. And then once you got those all out, you'll be able to lift up on the keyboard assembly and remove it. You got the connectors disconnected. Got a whole bunch of silver screws there. 
And then there's the keyboard electrical connection off to the left there. And up comes the keyboard assembly. There you go. You got to it. That's it. <laughs> now you to take the keyboard assembly off the back plate. Um, which chances are you'll need to do because you're probably going to want to replace the whole keyboard if you went this far. Yeah, they'll fail if you drop some liquid on them or maybe bang them around. Pretty, pretty hardy under normal use, but it is a common replacement item. You can buy them on eBay for about $25 of replacement keyboards. That's it. You got it. Okay, now we're going to put it back together. I'm going to reverse the process. Put the keyboard back onto the back plate. It locates on the bottom with a couple of tabs there and then snaps down. And you're going to replace the screws that were used earlier. Got five of them all together. Now you could have stopped right now and just temporarily plug the keyboard in and power the laptop up to make sure everything works. For demonstration purposes, we're going to put it all back together so that you know how it goes back together. Sometimes it, you might want to actually test it just in case to verify you had a good keyboard. Okay, once you've got that, now you turn the keyboard assembly upside down. Locate it on the location tabs. Get all the connectors out of the way. And this is where we had that ton of little silver screws that go all the way around the perimeter of the keyboard assembly and fasten that to the base. So we're going to reassemble all of them. Again, I think I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for where you can buy a, another keyboard assembly, we buy them on eBay. You can buy used ones that are fine to use or new ones. Somewhere around $20 to $30 range, I would say, to plan on. And there we go, finishing up on these little screws. Hopefully we get all done and don't have any left over. This design of the keyboard where you got to come in from the bottom, in contrast to some of the earlier models like the 5580 keyboard where you can do it all from the top. This is, um, well this, this video is about 13 minutes long. Still not bad for changing a keyboard, but it's at least twice as long as if with this design as it was with previous designs. I guess that's progress. Okay, we got them all in. And now, we're going to hook our connectors back up. Push them in. Snap the handle back down over these connectors, just like that. Now we're going to put that motherboard back in place. Going to get it into its location, and we'll have to how, uh, put the screws in plus hook up all of the connectors that we disconnected first time around. There's that metal bracket that goes on in that location. Kind of isolates the motherboard from the battery assembly. A couple of screws hold that in place. And we're going to locate the screws that we removed before on the motherboard assembly. Several locations for those. We're just putting them back in, the ones we took out a little while ago. And 
finishing up. Again, we hope that we don't end up with any screws left over. And then we got to go around and plug the connectors back in that we disconnected. You can see we have the one right there that snaps on. That little metal cover, there's a little notch in it that you locate on one end and then it swings down and it's held by one screw. Protects that screen assembly connection. Okay. Now we got the cables over there for the Wi-Fi antenna and we want to get those all plugged back in. Not too bad to do. And a couple of screws there to hold the connector in place. Again, finishing up the rest of the assembly screws. And connector, connectors, getting them all back in. Now we're going to put the hard drive back in. It slides into a keyed slot and it's held in with one screw. And the battery assembly, we angle that in under the plastic tabs on the outside. And then it slips down into place. It's held in by two screws. And there is a connector to the motherboard, which just pushes straight down on. And then put your smart card blank back in the hole. Put the cover on. And assemble the eight screws that hold the base cover on. Again, it's a more complicated than earlier Dell designs, but the whole process you see we're able to do in 13 minutes and not really rocket science. Just follow our lead there and you can do that yourself. Again, I might be inclined to test it before we put the covers all back on. That way, just in case you had a problem, you didn't have to completely reassemble it. And that's it. You heard it here from the uh, Fred at the Laptop Barn. If you have any questions, leave them below. Like our page and subscribe to our channel. Hey, thanks again for stopping by.